Okay, in this video we'll take a look at using a for loop to process each uh, element in the array. So this is where an array to me gets really powerful. So we have this in an array with multiple values. You know, it's very convenient to create multiple variables uh, with a single line of code there. And we could create, you know, 3,000 variables with the same amount of code. Um, and then we can access each individual element using this array access statement. But here's a really powerful uh, idea. We can now use a loop to go through each element in the array. So notice that each uh, element is an order, has an ordered element number starting with 0 up to length minus 1. So very, very easy. Here's a for loop. So we'll create this loop control variable with the initial value of 0. And 0 will be the first element in our array. And we'll create a condition uh, where length, the length of our uh, loop control variable is going to uh, increment up to the length minus 1. So we want to say less than 3, and that will make i stop at 2. We can also say less than or equal to 2. Either one would work. And then we're going to increment i by 1 so that we get through each element in the array. And we know that we can output a single value using this array access statement. Here's an example. So in this case, we would loop you know, one, uh, 0, 1, 2. But each time we would output names uh, index 0, which is this value here. So what we need to do is we need to change this index in the array access statement to equal i. So now each time through the loop, we're accessing names uh, at each subsequent index. So it would be index 0, then index 1, index 2, and then we would uh, break from the loop. So let's go ahead and run this and see what it does. Actually, we'll just run it down to the for loop. OK, so here we go. We can see in memory that it creates the names array, and we have those three values, Al, Sue, and Barry. And now I'm going to step through. So here's a nice visual of the for loop running as a review. So we first declare and initialize i is equal to 0. Then we check the condition. And 0 is less than 3. You can see the value of i over here on the right side. So i is uh, 0 is less than 3. It's true. So we run the for loop body. Then we jump up and increment i. And you can see that it has output the value. It over. It has output the value. For element zero. So you can see Al is output to the terminal. Now we're incrementing i. So now i is going to be equal to one. Now one is less than three is true. So we run the for loop body, and now we're outputting names at element 1, and we can see that it has output sue, and then we'll run it one more time, so increment the loop control variable, check the condition it's true, output names at element 2, and then we jump back up, increment i, now 3 is less than 3, is false, and we're all done. And you can see that it's run through each value in our array and output the value. So a really convenient way to have you know, lots of variables in our code and process or run through each, each value. And just like we've um, output the element, we can also assign values to the element as well. OK, let's take a look at the for each statement. So the for each statement is another type of loop and it's just really a shortcut way to run through a collection object. Uh, and here's the syntax. Um, so I should put a console.write line. And I'm just gonna put name. Okay, so here's the syntax. The keyword is for each. And this is called an enumerator. It says variable, just basically a string variable that we're creating. 
and that string variable takes on the value of each element as we run through the loop. Uh, and then in name, so we have this keyword in, and then this is the name of our array. So remember we declared it here, and then we are using it in the uh, for each here in names. So two parts to the for each. One, we declare this uh, variable, and then we uh, say in, and then the actual name of the array. Now, it's very convenient. We don't need this array access statement anymore because our string variable is going to take on the value of each element as we run through the loop. So uh, let me comment out this one. And start running at that for each loop. And we can see each time through the loop, name takes on the value of each element. So this is the first time through the loop, you see that name is equal to L. Second time through, name is equal to Sue. And a third time through, name is equal to Barry. So what are the advantages? Well, one advantage is just that we don't need to create the for loop uh, with the counter um, and the uh, condition and the increment operator. Uh, and then inside we can just refer to that string variable. Um, otherwise it's just doing basically the same thing as that for loop, just running through our loop. Uh, one by one from the zeroth element or the first element up to length minus one. So that's the uh, for loop and for each.